Welcome back to the Bitcoin.com weekly update for February 8th, 2024. I'm your host, Corbin Fraser, bringing you the latest and the greatest from the exciting Bitcoin and crypto universe. Got a lot to get through today. Some big price predictions from the Wolf of Wall Street, Monero's whiplash of dumps and then pumps following all the Binance delistings drama. Went up to $888 with our sponsor, Verse, with a fun play to earn game. Up and coming privacy coin, Xano's new hard fork scheduled for March. Presidential candidates saying no thanks to CBDD, CBDCs. Solana's airdrop is allegedly gamed and uh, some studies on crypto. So let's get started. First off, uh, the big one here is Wolf of Wall Street. Um, let's get into the Wolf of Wall Street talk here. And I got to find my screen here. There we go. Wolf of Wall Street explains Bitcoin having could send Bitcoin to 240,000 US dollars per BTC. So Scott Melker, you guys might know him as the Wolf of Wall Street. He provided a, a big bullish outlook for Bitcoin, predicting a potential surge up to $240,000 per BTC uh, following the halving event, which is coming up very soon here. April 2024, Bitcoin halving is happening. So in, in this detailed analysis published by The Street, Melker, who's like a celebrated trader, OG investor, went to jail for a little while for doing some naughty stuff. You know, Leonardo DiCaprio played him in a movie. But yeah, he was also the Binance Influencer of the Year for North America back in 2020. He broke down the mechanics and implications of the Bitcoin halving. So his, his whole take is that, that the Bitcoin halving will occur when the number of blocks that are mined reaches 840,000. This is known. Then the reward per block will decrease from 6.25 per block issued by, by, by miners that, that verify and secure that network. But it gets cut down in half to 3.125 Bitcoin going forward. This essentially cuts the new supply being issued in half, making it twice as hard for miners to earn Bitcoin. Drawing on historical data, Melker pointed out the significant price appreciation in the last halving cycle, um, you know, where Bitcoin soared from, what was it, $20,000 up to $69,000 per Bitcoin, which marked a 250% increase in price. So applying a similar percentage to this next cycle, Wolf of Wall Street, Scott Melker forecasts seeing Bitcoin reach around $240,000. So his optimism isn't isolated. Skybridge Capital's founder, Anthony Scaramucci, also predicted a post-halving price of 170 k per Bitcoin. Standard Charter's uh, earlier prediction also aligns with this bullish sentiment. They're suggesting 200 k per Bitcoin. Then venture capitalist Tim Draper, who's always been pretty bullish on Bitcoin, he's expecting BTC to hit 250 k this year, envisioning a future where the demand for US dollars wanes in favor of Bitcoin. So... Wolf of Wall Street, Scott Melker, he went on to say that, uh, you know, I might, I know it might seem like hyperbole to talk about Bitcoin being 170K to 200K or even one day 1 million, but this cycle has worked in the past. And until I see it work, not working in the future, I'm going to bet that, it, that Bitcoin's over 200K. So for those looking to invest in Bitcoin, go check out the Bitcoin.com self custodial wallet, which offers an accessible platform to start with the option to buy Bitcoin for as little as $30. It's an easy entry point into the cryptocurrency market where you hold your crypto. You can visit buy.bitcoin.com for more information and be begin your Bitcoin investment journey today. Jump into the next one here. Verse unveils an exciting initiative, uh, Lunar New Year contest, community governance proposals, and a unique NFT naming opportunity. So as proud sponsor of our weekly news show here, the Verse ecosystem continues to make strides, not only in the DeFi space, but also in community engagement and innovation. Recently, several exciting developments have taken place within the Verse community, showcasing its commitment to growth and user involvement. The, this one here, Verse Clicker, it's a fun little play-to-earn game. You can click things, upgrade your, your, your clicks, and uh, climb the leaderboards. These are the leaderboards. I am not at the top of the leaderboards. But if you do get to the top of the leaderboards, you can share a, a, from the prize pool of $888. Of course, you know, eights are lucky in the Chinese New, new Year. Chinese Lunar New Year. Um, you can also use some upgrades and, and use some on-chain scratcher events. These scratch and win tickets, they actually boost your points in the game. And you can also win up to 800, 8,888,000. And if you do scratch a big one, you can actually, uh, yeah, those points will apply to your, your leaderboard position. You can see here, I just did a quick scratch and holy, did I, I just won 100,000 verse. I paid 22,000 for that. So thank you team. Uh, let's go into the other update that's on Verse, which is the new proposals. Uh, you can use your Verse to actually vote on Verse community proposals. So this latest one is the Verse NFT collection name. 
uh, community holders and verse holders can participate by using their verse to vote on what to call the next NFT. You can check out this video teaser. It's very cool. And you can see what, uh, what people are preferring and drop your votes in using the verse you hold uh, either in your wallet or across the verse ecosystem across all of the DEX LP pools and farms and things like that. Great way to participate in community governance. And more, more importantly than that, the verse actually gives you access to the verse VIP telegram where you can hang out with me and Bitcoin.com developers and verse developers and just chat about what's going on in crypto. So if you ever want to say hi, you do have to hold a million verse, but you can verify through guild.xyz slash verse or just go visit verse.bitcoin.com. Fun stuff. Let's get it back into some, some of the news, which uh, I think we're going to go into the privacy world next, guys. So pr I think privacy, we're going to talk a little bit more about coming up uh, across Bitcoin.com news a lot more. There's been a lot more developments recently, but the, the big one here is that Monero's market uh, had a bit of a bit of a whiplash scenario where Monero's market resilience kind of got tested. So Monero, which is a leading privacy centric cryptocurrency, recently faced this like tumultuous market scenario. Binance delisted them. They said like, we don't want anything to do with privacy coins. The price of Monero dumped 32% like, like that sparking big significant concerns about the future of privacy uh, cryptos. However, in an unexpected turn of events, very shortly after, Monero demonstrated a remarkable resilience, bouncing back with a 25% surge. Kind of, um, yeah, defying some of the, the potential delisting woes and you know, worries that people had just to, to get out. So this rebound is a testament to the robust support and demand for genuine privacy in the crypto space, especially amidst the climate where privacy features are increasingly under scrutiny. So in my opinion, Monero's situation is particularly noteworthy in the broader context of privacy coins. Many privacy-focused cryptocurrencies are yielding to the pressures from centralized exchanges and regulatory bodies and company policies. They're just changing their protocols. They're just completely ripping out some of the privacy parts to ensure that they remain compliant and traded on exchanges to support the price. So Monero kind of said like, yeah, we're not doing that, which is kind of badass of them. Um, but the shift in, you know, towards compliance or, 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 you know, centralized exchange friendly uh, features in your privacy, privacy crypto does kind of start poking at the flaws of like, well, how private can it be if you can just like rip out the, the privacy parts? Um, and you know, what we're seeing as well is some of the, some of the coins that did that, they've been on this like downward decline. So it's interesting to see Monero just kind of stick to their guns. Monero's ability to recover in value, despite all those challenges, posed by like delisting and regulatory pressures does highlight the enduring demand for like true privacy in the crypto world. It underscores a critical point that like, yeah, compliance is important. We get it. But the essence of privacy coins should not be compromised as it forms the core of their unique value proposition. So let's lead this to the next story that we've got uh, an up, up and coming, up and coming uh, privacy coin, Xano. They've got a Zarkonum hard fork plan for March 15th, which is going to be enhancing some privacy and expanding their ecosystem. So Xano is preparing for a significant update with its Zarkonum hard fork. This update aims to enhance privacy through hidden transaction amounts and a mandatory ring up upgrade, positioning Xano as a leader in transaction anonymity. This hard fork, yeah, like I said, March 15th. It also introduces the world's first proof of stake scheme with hidden amounts, allowing completely anonymous staking. Additionally, the hard fork will enable the creation of confidential assets on Xano's blockchain. For context, that means confidential privacy tokens on Xano's blockchain, which is a very cool idea. Projects like Confidential Layer and Xano Bazaar are already lined up to launch post hard fork with more partnerships and discussion. Xano holders can anticipate new features such as Xano Trade, which is a DEX, an anonymous governance system, grants program for developers, and some deflationary supply proposals. These updates are expected to significantly boost Xano's ecosystem. So the development team led by on Andrei Sabolnikov, otherwise known as Cryptozoidberg, of CryptoNote and Monero fame, adds to Xano's credibility in the privacy coin domain. Check out Xano.org for more details about this exciting project. They also just recently did a Telegram AMA with uh, Crypto Griffins. You can go, yeah, check out all the Q and A's that that occurred there. Some really interesting, uh, interesting information there if you're in, into the privacy coin space. Let's get into the next uh, next news topic here. Presidential candidates Trump and RFK Jr. They're opposing a U.S. CBDC. 
So in the run up to the US presidential election, candidates Donald Trump and RFK Jr. have taken a firm stance against potential issuance of a CBDC. Both candidates have expressed concerns about government overreach and the potential for its increased surveillance of private financial transactions through a CBDC. Donald Trump emphasized his commitment to protecting Americans from what he terms government tyranny. He did a great job at that with, uh, you know, the COVID shots, but hey, who am I to judge? Uh, he argues that a CBDC would grant the federal government absolute control over your money, a situation he vows to oppose. Uh, on the other hand, RFK Jr. has raised alarms about the government's ability to monitor all private financial affairs with a CBDC. He's promised to support Bitcoin and aims to end the current administration's war against it, advocating for more financial freedoms. So kind of an interesting developments on the on the CBDC front, considering the last year was very heavily on like CBDCs are coming to get you. But it does make me think, was it all big ruse, distraction? You know, is this all just... Uh, distract people with cbdc's and regulate the crap out of bitcoin and crypto who knows so next story here we've got brazilian tax authorities reporting bitcoin irregularities in over twenty-five thousand statements you naughty 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 brazilians so brazil brazil's tax authority has reported irregularities in over twenty-five thousand tax statements this revelation underscores the increasing scrutiny of crypto transactions by tax agencies globally the authorities' finding highlights uh, discrepancies in Bitcoin's declarations, pointing towards either unintentional errors or potential attempts to evade, evade taxes. Um, so this development in Brazil, it's, it's, it's a clear indicator of the growing pains the crypto market faces as it interacts with like government, TradFi, regulatory frameworks. Brazilian tax authorities' report serves as a reminder to crypto users about the importance of accurate reporting and compliance with local tax laws. Be very careful. So yeah, for more in-depth information on this story, go check out Bitcoin.com news, all the details there. Let's get into the next one here. This one's uh, kind of fun. Uh, following our coverage of Jupiter airdrop last week, you can go check out the news last week. There's been a new development that, that, that emerged. Allegations have surfaced that the airdrop was actually compromised with reports of a single user receiving almost a million dollars of this Jupe airdrop by using 9,246 wallets. So the incident has raised concerns about the fairness and security of the airdrop process, casting a shadow over what was initially seen as a positive event for the Solana community. The situation underscores the challenging uh, aspects of airdrops and trying to keep it all equitable and fair doesn't always happen. There's always going to be these airdrop miners out there just trying to game wallets to try to, you know, participate more in airdrops and get more of the more a bigger piece of the pie. So yeah, this wasn't the only drama on Solana. You know, Solana also had a bit of a bummer bummer week this week too. It had a big big dump in price, but more worse than that, Solana went offline, guys. Again, it keeps going offline. Like Solana people, please keep your chain online. It's uh it's great when it works. It's very like the I would say the user experience of Solana when it's functioning is very high. High transactions per second, very instant finality. It's great. But going offline is kind of a uh, Kind of a deal break for many crypto holders. They don't want their blockchains to go offline. Um, so it is this weird trade-off of just like, you know, security, speed, usability. Maybe you got to keep your chain online, guys. Let's uh, let's get into the next one here. This, la this is the last story here. Uh, coin cover study reveals crypto ownership trends and trust issues. So a, a recent study by blockchain security firm CoinCover has shed some light on the current state of crypto adoption and public perception. Conducted among 16,000 participants, the study reveals that 17% currently own crypto, while 30% are planning to invest in the next year. Bitcoin emerges as the most, uh, the most trustworthy and most popular crypto asset, with 46% of respondents recognizing it as such. NFTs allow for a, a follow actually as the second, which was quite surprising to me. So Bitcoin, then NFTs, followed by Ethereum. Um, I hope those people actually looked at the NFT market, but hey, who knows? Despite this growing interest, the, the study highlights a significant trust issue with centralized crypto exchanges. Around 30% of the non-crypto users expressed zero trust in these platforms, which is, I don't know, for me, I mean, that's like a bullish sign. Like, that means nobody trusts centralized exchanges. They know not to hold your crypto there, which might make people say like, well, should I be holding my money in my bank in this like custodial bank that's supposed to be uh, great and safe? There's been a few bank runs recently. Who knows? But it is interesting, and it's I'd say more positive um, news for Bitcoin.com with our self-custodial wallet and any other crypto wallets that are focused on self-custody first. Like, yeah, 
people don't trust centralized exchanges. It's not, it's not a good situation. Uh, you know, probably largely due to the FTX drama, but who knows? It's been like so, so much drama around all the, the, the CEX is people are just waking up to it. So yeah, like I said, 30%, they don't trust them at all. 30% of respondents are concerned about crypto's technological aspects. And many view it as more of an enabler of financial fraud than a privacy tool. I mean, I think that's just people being tapped in on the news a little bit too much. But yeah, the CEO of CoinCover, he commented on the need for industry to address consumer concerns and demystify cryptocurrency to build confidence and provide stronger foundation for its future. And uh, yeah, the study also found a sizable portion of the respondents kind of cynical or entirely closed off to cryptocurrencies. So it's clear that we're not, we haven't hit everyone, right? Like crypto's still kind of got a bit of an image problem that I think will get shed. And it seems to get shed in these market cycles, you know? People start ignoring some of the, the sketchy things as soon as numbers go up and they start like, you know, being holier than that when the numbers go down. But uh, yeah, that, that's it for today, guys. We've covered Bitcoin price predictions, privacy coin updates, tax man cometh in Brazil, vote for Verse and win, uh, vote with Verse, or you can win $888 by playing some games, CBDCs, coin cover study, and all that Solana drama. So that's it for me, guys. Leave a comment below, follow, like, subscribe, and we will see you guys next week. Happy Lunar New Year. See you guys.